I want to talk about some things going on, um, especially as it pertains to how this political fight is going to pro pro progress over the next few months and over the next couple of years. Um, and then I also want to talk a little bit about critical race theory. Um, this won't be a breakdown of, of the theory yet. I'm, I'm not quite ready for that, but I am uh, learning quite a bit. Very interesting stuff. Uh, there is some stuff that I agree with. And so far, most of it, I, I disagree with the approach. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that in, in, in this live stream as well. First, I want to talk about the Capitol riots. And there's been kind of an, an interesting or strange development as far as the rioters go. So as you know, a lot of them have, have, have been arrested. Um, a lot of them have been let off on bail. I know a lot of people on the right are making it sound like most of them are being held in solitary confinement. No, most of them have been let off with bail. Although I do think that there are there is at least one, uh, the, the shaman guy who was held in solitary for a while. Now, I didn't get the reasons behind that, but it doesn't sound like it makes sense to me. So I'm, I'm not going to pretend like there's no mistreatment going on here. Remember, I'm, I'm not a statist. So when the government does something wrong, I'm going to call it out. So I'll be looking more into that as well. Um, but the, what I want to talk about is that some of the people who were involved in these riots on January 6th, uh, their lawyers are putting up a very interesting and kind of predictable defense. And they're, what they're going to try to do is try to drum up some sympathy for the plight of these people who participated in the riots. Now, there was an Associated Press article last week that reported that at least three of these defendants, and there's about 400, 400 at this point, so I actually expect for more defendants to use this defense as well, but at least three defendants claim that they participated in the assault on the Capitol building because they were misled by misinformation that was spread by, can you guess? Can you guess? You got it. By former President Donald Trump and by Republicans and by Fox News and by everybody who was to the right of Mao Zedong. <laughs> so here, here's according to the article, quote, lawyers for at least three defendants charged in connection with the violent siege, violent siege, that tell the Associated Press that they will blame election misinformation and conspiracy theories, much of it pushed by then President Donald Trump, for misleading their clients. The attorneys say those who spread that misinformation bear as much responsibility for the violence as do those who participated in the actual breach of the Capitol. So the first guy, defendant, his name is Anthony Antonio. Anthony Antonio. Isn't that having like having the same name just in a different language? Like his first name is the same as his last? Whatever. Anyway, Anthony Antonio. He indicated that he had that after all this, all this went down, that he had some misgivings about having listened to Trump when he claimed that the election was stolen. Quote, he says, quote, I kind of sound like an idiot now saying it, but my faith was in him, unquote. Well, he's right about that. <laughs> but it continues. He, he also talks about how he wasn't really into politics. But the reason he got into politics, and this is interesting, and it kind of makes me wonder uh, what other types of ideas or or political affiliations have come out of this? But he became into politics. He got into politics when the pandemic happened and the shutdown orders happened, and essentially he got into it out of boredom. He began consuming right wing news. He was, began watching Fox News. He started getting into conservatives on social media, and I would imagine other conservative forms of media as well. Um, he said, quote, I think they did a great job of convincing people. Uh, and it wasn't just him. It was him and his roommates who were essentially getting, uh, according to them, getting influenced to believe in conspiracy theories by Fox News and other news outlets. Now, <clears throat> a U.S. district judge, her name was Amy Berman Jackson, and she had denied the release of one of these people who was involved in the riots. And in her decision, she wrote, quote, six months later, the canard that the election was stolen is being repeated daily on major news outlets and from the quarters of power in state and federal government, not to mention in the near daily fulminations of the former president. So now we have a U.S. district judge 
essentially lending credibility to this to this defense. And she's taking, you know, she's taking the left wing line on this, right? She's obviously siding with the Democrats who really, really, really wanted the riots to be Trump's fault. Now, another defendant named Albert Watkins, or I'm sorry, his name was Jacob Chansley. The, the attorney representing him is named Albert Watkins. And now Jacob Chansley is the QAnon shaman, the one who was wearing that ridiculous getup in, in the Capitol building. And his attorney compared his experience to being brainwashed or enthralled by a cult. So the lawyer, lawyer claims that, quote, falsehood and incendiary rhetoric eventually overwhelmed his client's ability to discern reality. And he continues, quote, he is not crazy. Quote, the people who fell in love with cult leader Jim Jones and went down to Guyana, they had husbands and wives and lives, and then they drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> so he's comparing this whole thing to Jim Jones. Now, I know a lot of the people on the left and, and the Never Trumpers like to talk about how much of a cult MAGA is. I think that with most political movements, there, there can be a cultish element to it. These people forget how many people were all on, on Barack Obama. I mean, I, I, saw a, I saw a video of them turning a gospel song or one that's more meant to be for gospel and just putting it on Barack, uh, putting Barack Obama in it and falling in love with them. So this element does exist. They forget that under Obama, there are plenty of people for whom Obama could do no wrong. Everything he said was great. He couldn't mess anything up. Just like you see a lot of people doing with Trump. This isn't a Republican thing. This is not a Democrat thing. This has happened all throughout history and not necessarily with dictators. I mean, I know we all like to com compare everybody to Hitler and everybody to Stalin, but there have been leaders who haven't been dictators, but were able to create a cult of personality. In fact, if you read 47, uh, the 47 Laws of Power, that is one of the laws. Create a cult-like following. So, <clears throat> so the article goes on and it says, quote, however, those blaming their actions on Trump and conservative media might be disappointed. Uh, Christopher Slobogan, or Slobogan, however you pronounce his name, he's the director of Vanderbilt Law School's criminal justice program, and he told the Associated Press that he is very doubtful that this defense will work. He said, quote, it's not an argument I've seen win. He said that the basically the only hope that such a defense would have some merit would be if somehow believing in a conspiracy theory is used as evidence that the defendant is suffering from a mental illness that would preclude them from the law's presumption of competence. And he, he said, I quote, I'm not blaming defense attorneys for bringing this up. You pull out all the stops and make all the arguments you can make. And that's what we're talking about here. I think that they know this defense has a very low chance of succeeding. But as we saw in the George Floyd trial or in other trials, defense lawyers have to bring out whatever they can that might convince a jury to go easy on, on, on their client. He said, I mean, and th this expert said, quote, but just because you have a fixed false belief that the election wasn't stolen doesn't mean you can storm the Capitol. Another defendant, lawyers representing Bruno Joseph Kua. And now this is a 19 year old who uh, is accused of shoving a police officer outside of the Senate chamber, among other things, I'm sure. Uh, the lawyers representing him argued that his extremist rhetoric before and after the riot were also the result of social media. So his attorney claimed that his client was, quote, parroting what he heard and saw on social media and that he did not come up with these ideas on his own. He was fed them. Now, the day after the riot, this guy uh, wrote a post on Parler uh, in which he wrote, quote, the tree of liberty often has to be watered from the blood of tyrants and the tree is thirsty. Now, I saw a lot of posts like, oh, well, I, I shouldn't say a lot. I, I, I didn't see a lot of them, but I saw some. I saw some talking about, oh, how this was such a revolutionary event. Some were saying this is seven, 1776 all over again. And they bought into what was happening. Now, I think a lot of people were saying that when the riots were happening and they didn't understand how, how bad they were. But even so, saying that after the fact, you, you can kind of see that these people are into this kind of stuff. They're into the idea of using violence against the government. 
Um, now, going back to, to Antonio, like I said, he, he was working as a solar panel salesman. And then the coronavirus hit, shut down his place of employment. And he su supposedly became radicalized. And I hate to use that word in this situation because I think it's bullshit. I'm not saying that some people can get some that people can't get radicalized. We've seen it happen. And we've seen far right extremist groups radicalize people just like other other groups have. Um, now, according to the FBI reports, he threw a threw a water bottle at a Capitol Police officer um, who was being dragged down the building steps. Um, he also destroyed furniture and he was captured on camera yelling, you want war? We got war. 1776 all over again. See, it, he was one of those people saying that. Um, he also had a patch for the far right anti-government militia group known as the three percenters. And he's being charged with five different counts. Um, now, for Antonio in particular, his lawyer told the Associated Press that he doesn't intend to use this election fraud belief as a defense, but more to explain why he participated in the riots. He said that th that th this misinformation is, quote, not a defense, but it will be brought up to say this is why he was here. The reason he was there is because he was a dumbass and believed what he heard on Fox News. <laughs> See, now that statement is true for a lot of different reasons, <laughs> but it may not be true. It's not true as to uh, explaining why he was writing. I mean, because a lot of people watch Fox News, right? And the vast majority of them would never do something like this. They would never participate in a riot. I don't care what the left wing media tells you. Um, but the statement, the, the, the quote was pretty funny to me. <laughs> So, and, you know, I, I say this a lot when it comes to the riots and things like that, regardless of what one believes about the outcome of the presidential election. I know a lot of people think it was stolen. Some people think that it wasn't. I'm not going to go into the, into the, valid, the, the validity of that statement. But using Trump and conservative media as a scapegoat, scapegoat is it's absurd. It's ridiculous on its face. Anybody can see that that's ridiculous. I, I don't think this defense is is, is going to work. Um, but like I said, the, the defense attorneys have to do what they can. I don't blame them. They have to come up with whatever they can come up with. But what is more interesting about this and what I'm thinking is probably going to happen, especially if more defendants try to use this defense. And I think that there will be because I was hearing about this even earlier on when people started getting arrested. I think that there will be more than these these three young men who blame this on Trump and conservative media and use that as their, their defense. But what I'm predicting or what I'm, yeah, I'm going to predict it. I think that the media is going to seize on this. I don't think they're going to seize on it right now because it's only three people who are making this claim. But if more start using that in their defense, they're going to be using these court proceedings, which I don't know when they're going to happen. I don't know when all these people are going to go on trial or whatever. Um, I'm sure some some will end up being let it, let go. In some cases, the charges might be dropped. We've seen that in other riots. Um, but how are they they going to use the defense that these young men put forth to further to further their narrative about the riots? I think that they're going to be paying very close attention to the court proceedings. They're going to be paying very close attention to what the defense attorneys say. Um, CNN is going to be having experts on claiming that Trump can Trump's words radicalized people and that Fox News radicalized people. I'm calling it right now. I can't tell you when it's going to happen because I don't know when these trials are going to happen, but it's going to be around that same time. They're going to be paying very close attention and they're going to use that as much as possible. And at this point, after they lost that whole battle or battle over the January 6th commission, they have to try something else, right? They have, they have to try something else. And that's going to lead me into my next sub.